In this video, I'll show you how you can use the Ethers library to connect to and interact with a smart contract that's already deployed on the blockchain. Here in the Ethers documentation, we can see that we basically need to create this contract object. And to do that, we need the address of the deployed smart contract, the ABI of that smart contract, as well as a provider assigner. Let's first look at the contract that I've already deployed to the blockchain. This simple smart contract called Greeter is the default smart contract that's created when you create a new hard hat project. This contract basically allows you to read and update a greeting, which is stored as a private string variable. In the constructor, we're creating the contract with some value for the greeting. We have a public getter, which allows you to retrieve the value of the greeting. And then we have a public setter, which allows you to update that string variable. We can use this UI to read the contract, and we can see that currently the value in the greet variable is hello there blockchain bot. Here I have a basic hard hat set up. So I have the smart contract greeter.soul in the contracts folder. This is the same code that we just saw on the UI. And I've already deployed that smart contract using deploy.js. This is also the boilerplate that comes right out of a hardhat project, so there's nothing new. In my hardhat.config.js file, I've deployed to the Coven test network by reading my private keys from my .env file and then connecting to an Infura node. As we saw earlier in the Ethers documentation, we need the ABI of the smart contract to interact with it. The ABI for the smart contract was created during the build and is, can be found in the artifacts folder. So under contracts and then greeter.soul, we have the ABI in this greeter.json file. To connect to the Ethereum network, we basically need to create an Ethers provider. We can see a provider is basically an abstraction of a connection to the Ethereum network. To instantiate the provider, we need to provide this network argument, where the network is basically a URL to connect to a network. In the scripts folder, I have this JavaScript file called interact with smartcontract.js which is going to use the ethers library to interact with our deployed smart contract. In this file, I'm using two variables to store the path to our ABI that we just looked at earlier, as well as the address of the deployed smart contract. This get ABI helper method is going to load that ABI file and then extract the ABI from it. The main function creates that ethers provider by using the .env file to read the inferior project ID and then passing in the URL for Infura to connect to Coven. Then I'm going to get the ABI using that get ABI helper and then create an instance of that smart contract. Now that I have this contract variable, I can now call the methods on that smart contract. For example, we can call the greet method to retrieve the current value of the greeting. The greet method that we're calling from ethers is the exact same greet method that is contained in the smart contract. We can see that the greet method of the smart contract is a public getter, which simply returns the value of the greeting. Note that a provider in ethers can only be used for read-only operations. If we wanted to use a write operation, we would have to use a signer. In our first example, however, we're, we're simply going to read the value of the greeting, so we can get away with using just a provider. So now let's run the JavaScript file to retrieve the greeting. And we see that the value of the greeting is hello there blockchain Bob. The value that we got from running ethers is the same va value that we get if we read the contract from the Coven etherscan UI. Now that our read transaction succeeded, let's try doing a write transaction. Write transactions require a signer. In Ethers, a signer is used to represent an Ethereum account, which can be used to sign messages and transactions. A signer is an abstract class, and we basically have to use either a wallet, a void signer, or a JSON RPC signer. In my example, I'm going to use the wallet class. So I'm going to load the private key for my MetaMask account from my .env file, and then I'm going to use that private key to create an Ethers wallet object. I'm going to create a new variable representing the contract, except this time I have to pass in the signer instead of the provider. However, we still ha also have to provide the deployed smart contract address as well as the ABI. Now that we have the new contract variable, we can again call the methods of the smart contract. Let's update this to say updated greeting. This set greeting method is the exact same set greeting method that's exposed by the smart contract in the solidity code. So this method is taking in a new greeting and then it's going to change the greeting to that new value. After updating the greeting, we are going to wait for that transaction to finish. And then after that transaction has finished, we're going to again call the public getter to retrieve that updated value of the greeting and then log it to the console. Now let's run the script to again update the greeting. This time the transaction is taking longer because we have to wait for the right transaction to complete. And now we see that we've printed the updated value for the greeting. Going back to the UI, we can read the contract again to see the updated value.
and we see it's been updated. For further details, I recommend checking out the ePeers documentation because they have a ton of great examples. If you enjoyed this video, please give a like and subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next video.